Raymond. Hey, what's good, like man? <laughs> they came out like a Caribbean uncle. <laughs> when you're a doctor, you be catering to those old Jamaican people. Dr. Raymond, come quick, please. What's the diagnosis, Doc? High blood pressure, I'm never stressed in my life. <laughs> Just I'm probably gonna be streaming while he's on here, but I'm gonna get his Twitch streams up. Hey man, you gotta get them views. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sleep. On, yes. I forgot. Yeah, bro. I got done with hooping at like four in the morning. Oh what gym is open at four in the morning. A, a gym that you rent out. Oh, oh. Well, you got rent out money, huh? <laughs> when ball is life. Yo, a bunch of ballers put their stimmies together and rented out a gym. <laughs> How Eddie say, give me five minutes, and I'm here before him. Wait a minute. Black people in time don't really go together too well. I believe in what the Lord says. You know, every eye will see him, but we probably going to be last. Dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I thought we were going to do surprise questions edition. Just questions off the dome. Oh, oh. Lord. <laughs> uh, uh, Yo, Josiah's reaction is the reason why I didn't exactly go with that idea. Uh, also, though, I like having the polls. Hey, back again. Hey, man. Background. Eddie, what it do? What it do, baby? What it do, baby? Yeah. Chilling, chilling. How y'all been? Well, yeah, you're just trying to survive. I'm trying to get, get trying to get like you. <laughs> oh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're trying to get like you. <laughs> Eddie not even going to deny it. He like, no, nah, I try to get like me too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to just take the compliment. Yeah, I think the last one we did was Thanksgiving one. I, I definitely need the haircut. It looked like Eddie here still looking good. You know, Joe Sai haircut looking fairly fresh, though. And then Neff covered up. So, you know, Neff. This is, it looks like it's the most recent fresh cut. Um, yeah. Yes, it is. I definitely got mine like. Like on Thursday, no okay. cash. Oh, Joe just left the shop, man. Yeah, that's last um, he got his but, five minutes ago. But I'm gonna go back to you know, the wave gang. You know what I'm saying? I've been contemplating it, but I'm just too lazy to like do rag brush, do rag brush. Let's just hop into it. First question: Do women's sports get enough respect? We got 92 percent saying no. Neff got a face. This is gonna be a hot take. All right. Oh my. It definitely is. Got it. But I don't think it'll get the respect it deserves until the culture of sexualizing women goes down. Because te technically, to a certain point, most of the time we'd be like, yo, are you watching WNBA? Nah. And then somebody be like, yo, you should watch them. Yo, like, they got some bad girls out there. Skylar Diggins is out there. You know, Maya, whatever girl you like. Right. That's how you right. put people on sports. Be like, what sports you watch? I watch, I watch beach volleyball. Why? <laughs> You know, so you love football, but are you watching that lingerie league? Bro, I was just about to bring that. <laughs> I mean, just about to bring like, that okay, up. if you look at the conversation of how we put on people on women's sports, yo, the girls exactly. are bad, or check out this girl in particular. Athletes, especially the w <laughs> the WNBA, uh, you know, Kobe was a big fanatic of that, you know, UConn. But also, if you're going to talk about this, I feel like you also got to throw in the financial discrepancies. What they don't understand is that viewers is what fuels the NBA. Not only that, but they market themselves as entertainers. This is definitely definitely a top, uh, tough topic. Shout out to the Minnesota Lynx, though. That's my favorite WNBA team. And a lot of it, a lot of people saying that, oh, a lot of women deserve to get, like women in the WNBA deserve to get paid as much as some of the guys, which don't get don't get it twisted. There's some WNBA players that will work some NBA players. I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Again, that goes with the view viewership. The uh, you get paid due to the amount of money you bring in. The WNBA is not bringing that much money in compared to the NBA. That's why, that's why LeBron or Steph Curry is able to get a big check. I, I don't, I don't believe women's sport is necessarily going to get as much support. Probably the most support I've seen for women's sport is probably women UFC, and mm -hmm. that's because of somebody liking their fighting style. There's no better in fighting you know what i'm saying like there's something a girl could come and kick your your tail <laughs> due to her knowing a better a, a better fighting style or she knows how to control the situation better than the, the guy does i don't know that's that's a tough that's a tough one i don't think it's gonna improve that much and i do agree with that but the moment we stop sexualizing women then then probably women's sports will get the respect they deserve 
for me, I don't really watch sports like as much as you guys do. So I don't really have like a, a large say so. But I agree with what both of you guys say, because like the same, like the, like you said, for women UFC, I was watching a video like the other day on YouTube and I didn't see it as, oh, she looks good. I see it as she knows how to fight. So that is a true thing. And since I don't watch sports in general, I just, it's not that I wouldn't watch a women's basketball game. It's just not the first thing that pops up in my head. I just, whatever is on is usually a, a men's, you know, NBA game or a college basketball game. And that's just what I watch. So I don't know. I guess the diehard people like you guys do watch women. I mean, watch women's basketball as well as men's basketball. But the average person, like me, who just gives it a glance here and there, I think that's what it is. There's more of us normal folks that just, you know, here and there go watch a game, opposed to the people like you that are diehard basketball fans. So you guys give the energy and viewership to both sides, as the normal person probably doesn't, in my opinion. That's that's another thing. Women's sports compared to men is not as entertaining as everybody would say like for somebody to say you watch the WNBA game you love basketball I would get excited off of oh oh that 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 ball movement type you know what I'm saying yeah. like while while LeBron coming down for a tomahawk jam you know we have Asia Durr shout out to Asia Durr she's going for a right-handed layup stuff like that that's that's not really gonna get you off your seat unless you you love basketball <laughs> enough for someone like Eddie who's like a casual sports viewer he's he's going to get excited Eddie's not going to send me a layup in front of the NBA <laughs> baby with that strong layup but he's going he's going to send yo did you see did you see LaMelo throw under the leg behind to Miles Bridges and he reverse windmill that John bro like that's crazy bro like yeah, that's gonna get that's what gets you off your seat. I forgot to say at the beginning, but I guess it's kind of a dual theme. Um, it's like the pandemic and anniversary, so to speak, but also um the first few questions are a shout out to Women's History Month. So um that's why the Ooh. first three were um yeah, so that's why the first three were specifically about women. But yeah, it's all that y'all said. It's even like the roles, like I guess generals to put it blunt, women are supposed to be like doing or what we think they should be doing and where they quote unquote belong because it started out as a joke and then it became not a joke and it kind of went back to being a joke but like women belong in the kitchen like that idea started on the internet like from the beginning but you'll still see that get dropped on like we'll post about like women's sports and stuff like no matter what a girl does y'all don't understand what Ever sport it is, if we're talking about the best of the best, these women would outdo like 95% of men. And that might even be like underselling. Elena Deladon is probably not going to win a one on one versus LeBron. Gosh. But to suggest that if she got thrown into an NBA game, that she would have no relevance whatsoever, you guys must not know how good these players actually they are, are because they don't level. they don't watch them they don't watch them so they wouldn't they, they really wouldn't know the tough part is kind of that money is the fuel for the marketing so it's mm -hmm. like it's harder for like the WNBA or like women's soccer to market because they have less to really put out towards marketing and then also like endorsements and stuff I don't know about y'all but I haven't really seen too many like female athlete advertisements I mean, I know women's soccer gets a few because I, I feel like they're honestly the biggest domestic athletes um, because of the World Cup and stuff like that. Between them and the WNBA, th those, that's like the only pool of athletes I can even imagine that would get like endorsements. Uh, Simone Biles, gymnics. Oh, oh, Simone. Well, she's just mm -hmm. the, gymnastic. And then you have, you have Serena. Serena, too. Yeah, she. Serena. You'll but see, the thing is, that's not the pool, though. Those are, like, the individuals. Oh, okay. Like, when I say okay. pool, I'm thinking of, like, that, like, sport where you can, like, WNBA, there's enough of them, okay. and soccer, they're known enough. That's it. Oh, well, I guess gymnastics in general, a few of the other girls do get a little bit of shine. But then again, the Olympics are every four years, so then they kind of only get that boost every four years unless you're Simone and you're dominating year in and year out so you stay relevant. I was having a conversation with somebody. They said the only reason 
rest in peace, Kobe. The only reason Kobe was involved with the WNBA was because of his daughter. Stop the cap. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't think so. He had a relationship with Maya Moore, Diana Taurasi, like all of them. And he, Kobe made a list of, of women players that could play in the league. Sue Bird would be the NBA Steve Nash. Mm. Diana Taurasi would be the NBA Steph Curry. He had a good relationship with the coach from UConn even before. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gino, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gino Atkins. Who? And. Wait, no, I, Oriyama. I, I, Gino Atkins is a football L -O -O, L -O -O. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure his last name's a little longer than that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My phone, my phone. I, I was watching um I was watching a a, a, a video of uh, this dude I played ball with, the former NFL player. Yeah. Um and he hit it like had a big hit on Gino Atkins like like before I went to sleep. So that's oh. that's why I was like, ah <laughs> um hit so hard put you to sleep. <laughs> not really but yeah but people were like oh <laughs> people were like yeah Kobe would not uh been so uh advocate of the of the WNBA y'all are y'all are really bugging and that's crazy like to the point that you take someone like Kobe possibly only Michael Jordan is more synonymous with basketball than Kobe and to take a guy that's that synonymous with something and tend to then be legitimized his interest in the woman's aspect of that thing because you think, oh, he's just bandwagoning because his daughter. Like, that's how deep this, like, anti-woman, like, kind of views go. Like, that's like saying, oh, Tom Brady only watched women's football because, yeah, women's football, whatever, like, if his niece had played in a women's football league because his niece plays softball. But his niece plays women's football. It's like, oh, it's just because he has a niece, not because he likes football. And it's like, yo, it's Tom Brady. Like, this man is going to watch anything football. He'll watch AAF, XFL, AFL, any FL that you put in front of this man. He'll probably <laughs> watch it. So, but that's how it is, man. And it's just oh. wild that, like, people are just, like, it's just no credit anywhere for the product, for their abilities, the finances. The I, I think it does have to be a culture shift. Maybe it's like Neff said, maybe sexualizing. I feel like it might be even deeper than like I think you might have to like rethink women just being able to give them more credit in general just being able to say she's good at this period I don't know I hope we can at least like have more of a positive influence I think just in like conversations mm -hmm. and stuff around like women and women's sports because it could be a lot better the next question wait right, you didn't give us the percentages I gave it at the beginning yeah you gave it at the beginning <laughs> Oh, oh my, it's been too long. Neff is, Neff is rusty. Neff is rusty. Should the women be paid like men in sports? Survey I, says. We definitely touched that. We definitely touched that. 70%, you? yes. So, yeah. Um. Well, I'm, I'm throwing it in because, you know, we got to report the finding. The two sides of this question are like, you know, the pay should be quote, quote, equal. Or if you think maybe it should at least just be a similar scale of payment. Well, they get paid less overall, but they get like a smaller percentage. I think it's only like three or four percent, but in the NBA, I think it's like fifty-two, if I remember. And then the WNBA is like forty-eight. Should Maya Moore and LeBron get the same salary? Probably not. I would say on an absolute scale, like male players generally can do more. So I'm not gonna be mad if LeBron's getting 30 million to Maya Moore getting 20 million. I mean, for LeBron to be at what he's at 35 million, I think, a year. And the first four female draft picks in the WNBA get 68,000. Yeah. Whereas the WNBA first four picks get between six and eight million. Um, so we're talking about a like a 100 old difference. You got to be on the best of your game. And even then, who, who do you think is a scrub in the NBA? They're probably making more than that. The, the, <laughs> let's not say any name. Let's not say any name. <laughs> the one thing I can find real quick is an athlete designated as a core player in the WNBA will earn $215,000 in the 2020 season, rising 3% annually for a few years. The best is getting 215000 maybe two fifty if you're counting bonuses. Best NBA players are getting $40 million. 
Now, is revenue gap 100-fold or almost 200-fold? I don't know. That's quite a big gap, but if it's that big, possibly, but still, like a 200-fold difference in the max salaries of Steph and Maya, Elena, Daldon, whoever, is Steph 200 times better at basketball than the best WNBA player? He shoots pretty well, but 200 times, that's bit of a stretch. But you got to count, too, like maybe state taxes and your agent fees. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So should they be paid like that, which is, in the retrospect, ambiguous in what like men can actually mean? If, hypothetically, men and women had access to the same pot of money. This is this is without endorsements and all that stuff. But it's minus endorsements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, straight, right? straight, oh, salary. straight salary. Straight Well, people in the WNBA, or the NBA, and WNBA, they get paid based on their marketability, their talent, and how many, yeah, basically, people they bring in. Yo, I, I literally went to an Indiana playoff game for $15. Playoffs? $15. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Wait, what round? What round was this? <laughs> this was this was a uh, Eastern Conference. What did, <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> and literally, the, the seats weren't even filled, and we we're like, "Bro, there's so many seats down in the lower bowls, bro." And we we're like, we "We're gonna go." <laughs> so we walked up. We walked up, and we basically sat. Y'all were in the second bowl, or the we we're like in the yeah, we we're like in the second bowl, and there were seats. Mad seats. Uh -huh. The fact that that LeBron James is there, it could be a, it could be the, it could be Oklahoma City, the smallest market in the, in the, the in the NBA. The prices are still gonna go up. Why? Because LeBron James is there. People are gonna travel wide and far to come to to see LeBron play. Yes. And and with that, they add that to the salary. Like so, with you pointing that out, that's a rationalized answer to a no, which it's hard to debate in the real world. Like, given the real world economics, I think the respect is honestly the more valuable thing. Should women be paid like men in general? 98% yes. I don't know if you've ever had a 100% question. Yeah, I thought this one might... Take it away, Neff. <laughs> Here's my thing. Yes, for, for base jobs. Let's say I own a construction company. I'm going to pay you based on what you can do. If you can pick up that sheetrock the same as Timmy, then Jennifer... <laughs> the same as Timmy. Let's go. But, Jennifer, but if Jennifer tells oh. me her capabilities... I don't assume. Jennifer's like, I can't pick up that level of sheetrock. I can only, you know, plaster, put it up. Jennifer's getting paid to plaster and put up. In a blanketed statement, yes, they should. If you're able to do the same job, man or woman, you should get paid the same. But I'm saying, like, this is, there are certain instances where it wouldn't be so. No, I, I, I feel that. I think I think your, your side point is valid in the context of your larger answer because yeah. it that's it's a blanket statement i mean well, for me it's a pretty straight up yes for the same reason like if you can do the job y'all you get the pay you get the money you yeah, get the you, pay. you do a job you get the money but i hear about stuff like bonuses being given more to guys and all that kind of stuff with the bonuses situation it depends on who does the best work obviously for, for me, speaking as me, as a manager. Is that's what the know, qualifications are for the bonus? I'm a computer CEO that we fix computers or whatever. And both of my workers as a guy and a girl, and they're fixing computers. They get paid the same rate and same pay in terms of um, the women's uh, basketball and men's basketball. It's marketability. Yes, even though they're doing the same task, aka playing basketball, but LeBron does have a bigger market value in terms of receiving that amount of money he does get. But that's based on marketability yeah. opposed to the job. I, I think it depends on the realm. In some cases, I think what happens with men and women salaries is that there's false credit given, I think, sometimes to men for whatever. Or I think sometimes there's credit taken away from women, like suggesting like differences that may not actually be relevant. You think Jackie Chan gets paid more because he does his own stunts compared to having a stunt double? Probably. <laughs> Probably. The money that okay. would have gone to the stunt double goes to him. <laughs> so uh, by definition. It does. But but just to show you how much that concept like, we're not immune from that. Even in the church. Oh, bring it Lord. home. Bring it home. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
Well, that variety gets you paid. I know for a fact, like honorariums, if I'm getting like Myron Edmonds, mm. that mm. envelope's gonna weigh a lot heavier than if you got me. Bird, if you're getting Birdman, shout out, you know, mm. Birdman, breath, mm. breath of life. That's, right. that's over with. That's over with. Let's let's say, that's I, want Birdman. I got, bro, I have to write the check. If I'm getting, let's say, let's say, uh, Chap Polite, right? It's not gonna be that big of a check. It's not. I pay for the gas. <laughs> Birdman. <laughs> I pay for your gas. <laughs> yo, I, hey, yo. Hey, hey, you got to trap like that, man. You ain't got to trap like that. I'm terrible. Outside of the women that I know from Andrews, I don't know too many women past. But I guarantee you, it probably affects them too. Their honorarium is probably not as, as their male counterparts. And we have our own thing to deal with that as a church. You know, you're putting Birdman at the Hilton. Trap polite. Be like, exactly. I got this, man. We got Motel <laughs> 6. <laughs> that, that, that best western bro <laughs> Yo. all right the next one we we ripping the page straight out of the i am athlete shout out to that boy brandon marshall but we, we about to get a little bit of older are you mentally healthy right now we got 63 percent saying yes i'm out of 10 as far as what i can control like i'm working i'm putting my applications trying to get into like a traveling program the things i can't control I want to say I'm at a six. Like I'm functioning. Last Sunday, I lost my little cousin. Um, you know, she took her own life. I in my in my mind, I feel like I'm dealing with it. I'm grieving the way I gotta grieve. When I get home next weekend and we do the funeral, I'll probably you know do the crying thing and stuff like that. But when I went in the hospital and I saw her, I started to cry. But then I just stopped because. Look, I, I know for a fact depression depression is what drove her to do that. But when I looked at her, guys. She just looked mad peaceful. It's not the solution. But from her point of view, like the fact that her body was at rest, she probably hasn't felt like that in who knows how long. And that's kind of what's helping me get through that grieving process. Because obviously what we wouldn't do to have her back now. But at, at the same time, it's just kind of like the permanent solution to temporary problems. She got what she felt in that moment. Her only option, she got it. God understands depression, suicide, all that stuff way more than we ever will. And then, you know, with some other things, you know, my relationship, trying to get that on track, you know, because I want to get married when I have a job, a career, so I can provide. Statistically, the first three years of marriage are the hardest. Most of the time, it's because of finances. She has a job. She has a career, her own apartment, stuff like that. Me, I'm trying to do what I got to do um, and, and trying to figure out where God's trying to lead me. And I'm not trying to be a half-finished project to put with her finished project and then, like, we'll figure it out. Her thing, she's like, we'll figure it out together. My thing is just like, that's too much unknown. So that's a stressor for me. You know, I got all this stuff that I can't control, which is causing me stress. But ultimately, I'm relying on my faith at the same time. A nine-ish for the mental health. I'm doing well. I'm alive. I used to, well, before these past couple months, I used to have outside things that I could not control affect me terribly. Like, affect me, people around me. And people would see that. I guess like I'll close myself off, like I guess a wallow in in like stuff that I can't control. And now like the past few months, I stopped letting it affect me. It's like, all right, that's out of my control. I can't do nothing about it. I've moved up to like a seven with that. It used to be like probably a one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. In terms of like handling things, I feel like a 10. Like everything is good. I can handle things like in terms of that are in my control, whether it's like, do I get angry at this or not get angry at this? Do I let this go on? Actually, no, I'm going to put it to a nine because the last few weeks I've been, it's sort of like when you've been somewhat patient for so long or you let things slide for so long, that moment that that person keeps doing that same thing, you just sort of like lash out or say the things you wouldn't normally say. On the other side, I guess like spiritually like with God and stuff like that, I would say like I'm at like a six or seven and it has nothing to do with me not like believing him or letting him in control because that's the most easiest thing I can do my thing is just like the things I see on social media so like lustful things or looking at women in a certain way you know when you sin against yourself and all that stuff and watch what you're looking at with your eyes and be aware what you're listening to your ears I'm like what is it should you then delete your social media to then save yourself for salvation what is it are you choosing social media over salvation now go pray or go talk to him, go do something, go for a walk, go do something. I've had a internal pivot 
within the last six months or so. I personally always want to have a daughter. Significantly more interested in having a kid relative to like a year ago, let's say. Separate from that, I am also interested in like being in a relationship. The struggle, I guess, has more been with a relationship thing. And, you know, Twitter will catch you sometimes because it's like there will be a picture and then the crops are weird. Sometimes it crops the bottom, the top, whatever. So it could be a picture of like a face and then you open this like, oh, man. And so, <laughs> so, but in those moments, you do have kind of those internal fights and stuff like that. Relationally, it's been about eight to nine. Uh, emotionally, overall, it's like seven to eight. It's a little bit less than the relation relations because like for me, being the extrovert that I am and not seeing people is just... Uh, spiritually i'm doing fairly well um i feel like i am starting to kind of see what my spiritual adult self is supposed to be and kind of the role i'm going to fill um so spiritually i think i'm at a nine um definitely working on like praying more and just being more consistent though um I'm like rushing to finish my Bible in a year plan because I'm like, I'm like 20 days behind and there's like 20 days left <laughs> before like the year comes. So I'm like doing two a day or whatever. Physically, I mean, you know, I'm exercising and whatnot. So physically I'm good. Mentally, um, it's been a time of growth and like it's something I didn't realize so I talked to a friend but like with life things have not really gotten easier for me at different stages I've just kind of grown stronger um and I feel like right now I'm at a phase where I'm growing stronger grow a little bit stronger do that and then go to a new school where Josiah was the only person that I knew one turned into the whole school so I mean oh, you know we could have <laughs> that all <laughs> university home of rape that's what it is <laughs> And now I think I'm in that phase where it's like a workout. You break down a little bit and you got to deconstruct things a little bit before you build it back better. I think I'm in the building stage now. It's generally good. There's various things that I'm like trying to work on and stuff. Just chasing after God and getting the dunk down. Like that's literally who I'm chasing after at this point. I think I'm just trying to take the best out of every day. I don't know about y'all. I think I'm doing better than I might have expected, honestly. I've always had faith in myself. But it's been a lot that we have gone through, honestly. Even though we're in a crazy time, aka the pandemic, it hasn't been all bad for all people. As weird as it sounds, it was a blessing in disguise for me because I was fed up with the job that I was at. Not that I hated it, I was fed up. And I, like, I was drained emotionally and physically. And just having those several months just to chill and everyone else is chilling too, so I don't feel like I'm in a rat race. It's gotten to the point, like, as of, like, right now, that, like, I kind of forgot that there was a pandemic going on. The pandemic was great in terms of just be having to be home, and, like, I got to reconnect with uh, my mom a lot more. Opened up to her about stuff that I never thought I would open up to her. <laughs> to her about bad thing. You know, I didn't keep up with, keep up with any workouts, so I got to work out with, uh, try to lose that uh, COVID weight off. And um <laughs> but, he said, uh, uh, fast. He's like, COVID went up. Did the pandemic make you deal with things you wouldn't have dealt with otherwise? And 82% of people said yes. So I mean Josiah and hey, Eddie both already kind of gave their answers to that, but I don't know if y'all got a wait. Bit. So who did they what did they, so what they so do all day? Y'all didn't have to deal with school online? Well, remember, it's things you wouldn't have dealt with otherwise. So this is more about, you know, interpersonal conflicts, personal growth, that okay. kind of thing. I think it just, the pandemic just made me go down to the deepest part of myself and see like, okay, like how strong are you? And who are you? Like, what kind of person are you? It made me definitely deal with how I need to connect with people, like, what kind of friendships I need to have. And it made me understand how I can actively maintain or actively manage friendships. Being at Andrews and being in university, I just got to manage a lot of things passively as I sat in central locations and I just got to see a lot of people. So I got to manage a lot of things passively. Having to manage them actively, that was a pivot that 
you know, really made me look at myself, have to understand myself more and then go from there. For me on the adding on to that, I see myself as a mixture of an introvert and an extrovert. That that part where you said uh, you had to search to your deepest part of your soul, like you started like, do some deep searching. I felt that. I, I felt that. And my introvert quota was filled up and overflowing. And I was actually getting pressed. It's to the point where I was like, shoot, I, I'd even go to the club, man. Like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I want to, I want to, I want Oh outward my! Interaction. <laughs> like, I, outward interactions, but like, it's like I'm tired of being home. Like I'm tired. Uh, I think for me, like, yeah, I had to deal with some things personally, but I was locked down here at the school, so it was me, the dean, one of my other boys, Chadley, they used to work here. So we kind of had the younger staff. We kind of just had each other, you know. How to how to long distance date? How to deal with that? Even in a pandemic, it's even um, that much more harder, I guess. Uh, especially for me to notice how she was feeling and just trying to understand how she felt knowing that, you know, coming to see me or me going to see her wasn't really even an option. Like for me, I kind of got like, I worked through it. I was just like, you know, when things loosen up, I, you know, you're the first person I'm going to come see. Her is just like, ah, uh, it's, it's tough. Like it's, and for me, it was just like, I, it wasn't registering to me. How I emote emotions. Being a chaplain is what I want to do. So I can bring myself to understand a lot of people's emotions. When I'm in the realm of, I'm in a hospital, I'm going to visit people, or I go do a home visit. As it comes to my everyday life and my relationship, I had to confront, like, bro, like, there's something wrong because I can't do it. I'm not in tune. I'm, like, emotionally inept. I'm still working on it now, don't get me wrong, but... Um, it was a lot worse then. With everything being slowed down, it kind of took the pressure off a little bit. Th those couple of months off were kind of like a blessing. Honestly, the pandemic wasn't really all that bad for me. I feel like I got more blessings than anything. I feel like I still got to take that face value. Like God is still here. I don't know how, but He's still here. You know, looking at my sense of sermon in here. Nah, man, I'm, I'm just you know, I'm being good. Go ahead, go ahead, make your sermon, brother. Like, go like ahead, make your sermon. Like, 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 like spiritually, <clears throat> I see like, I'm at a six. If I'm being honest with you, I don't like it. But I feel like I'm being stagnant. And I, t I told these gentlemen from my first worship, I was like, my job here is to be a stepping stone to propel you closer to the cross. But there are times where I look at it, I was like, bro, how can I do that if I can't even leave myself? Or, I, or I'm not even going to the places where I know I'm supposed to be going. And I feel like that's where I'm, I, I'm stagnant with it. You get what I'm saying? Like, unless I'm going to visit you and we sit and we just rapping about <laughs> rapping about God, I can do that all day. But if it's like sitting down and reading the word, one day I can do it for hours. But other days I look at my Bible and be like, I know enough verses. You know, like, like I, I know enough verses. Like, I don't need to read. Like, right. like that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it real with you. That's literally sometimes the thought process. Like, I feel it. you know, I don't want to do that today. I'll find something else spiritual to do today. And, and sometimes the, the victory is the fact that I prayed with my girl that night, that was the only spiritual thing I did that day. I think the pandemic really highlighted like, bro, you're you, you, you're not too far away from being a five. And once you had a five, you're not too far away from being a four. So I think it was more just like, I got to find another way to deepen my connection with the Lord. You get what I'm saying? You know, this thing that I'm dealing with my cousin, you know, was unexpected. And I, and I told the guys here, you know, the guys here at the dorm, if I didn't have some faith tucked away, like a reservoir of faith, this probably would have hit me a lot harder. So easily in these situations, we kind of want to blame God. Like, where were you? But I choose to look at it like, if God allows my family and, and friends, all alike church family, to go through this loss, number one is because there's something, there's obviously many things that we don't understand that he's not ready to reveal to us, but also he'll provide the emotional need, like the peace, the comfort he'll provide, you know, for her parents, her brother, my parents, my brother, stuff like that, like our immediate family that's going through this. And it's hard to believe in that. I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, because she was only 18. I'm like, yo, a life worth living. She was going to graduate in May. Now it's done. So I could easily look at God and, and this could easily affect my spirituality. I'm only at a six and I could backslide to a one to where it's just like, you know what? Like I could get to the extreme. Where it was like, you know what? God's like, man, God don't really bang with us. Or it's like, God is selfish. Like God is not fair. I could easily go there. I'm not, but I could. So I had to do little things here and there. And I count the little victories, whether it is my girl reminding me to pray. My girl does the same thing. Like, did you pray and all that stuff? This is for all the fellas out there. Mm. Get you a church girl. She's going to hold you accountable saying, or I wouldn't even say it's holding you accountable. She's just checking up on you. Hey, did you pray? Did you? But 
by her doing that, it makes you even want to up up your game because you're like, I'm the leader of the household when it comes to everything. So if I'm not spiritually sound, how am I going to help my wife or my girlfriend be spiritually sound when she's down? So if we get our stuff together, we can then help her. It's not always the same thing. She can be encouraging. She can be helpful, but she's not going to put me to where like I'm out of my, you know, my, you know, my bad mood. It doesn't always happen like that for guys. So that's just another thing. Us, man, I'm glad we always do this videos and stuff. We always check up on each other. Ray's always texting me and stuff. I'll send funny memes here and there to Josiah on Instagram. I definitely got to hit up Neff a little bit more. But this is what, it, this is what it all is. Us working together, us uplifting together each and every way. Whether it be a simple conversation, whether it be just us venting how we feel on a certain topic, this is what helps us keep pushing and chugging along. When Jesus comes on those clouds and we get to be like, man, we made it, man. That's just that's the thing I'm looking forward to. So we just got to keep pushing. But I got to dip out because my little brother needs to go to Walmart and I need to drive him there. So. Hey, good, good sibling duties. <laughs> I'll catch you guys. Has social media helped you during the pandemic? Oh, man. Eddie would have fried this one. <laughs> I say um, 60% yes for this. Meditate on it. This, it's, it's a yes or no. Wait a minute. That's not how it works, sir. I know, I know. But it, it's, it's, social media has helped in terms of passing the time, time by. And the bad thing that social media has done is that it has influenced us in a sense, I guess you could say. Wanting, doing things that, you know, <laughs> that we, you wouldn't do. I spent most of my time playing video games. So that that's where my time was spent. But I, I, I really saw how it like affected me, like especially like later on. Productivity wise, I probably had like the my all time low. And during school too, it's, it's not it's not that great. I'm gonna lie to you. I'm not lie to you, but I'm getting by. You know, I'm getting by. I'm doing what I need to do. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's like the same issue we had with um social media period already with how yeah. we view things, um, how it affects us. You know, you want that social media relationship. You want that, all that good stuff. It has more time to dwell in our mind. I think it has. Um, and honestly, the humor has been day saving sometimes. And sometimes it's really just that thing that you needed. And this is like early on the pandemic. So like the world is like mad quiet. And you're just like, man, how many more days are going to be like this? And then you go on Instagram or Twitter and you just see something and you're just dying. And sometimes that like kind of hits a refresh button for you. There still is something to be treasured or to be enjoyed even in days like these. For me, it wasn't that bad, man. Honestly, it, it, it was a little bit of a time waster when it needed to be. Maybe sometimes where it, where it wasn't supposed to be. Um, but it was a great way to keep communication, keep tabs on people. You'll see me retweet a lot, but it's rare that I actually have a tweet about what or how I'm doing. You got to ask me or I got to tell you. Yeah. And because I, I don't want social media to be my main vehicle for communication of me. You'll know what I think is funny. You'll know if Ohio State does something good. But if you want to know how Neff is doing, I got to tell wow. you. It might be the ego side of me. But I never want to fish or I never want to take attention away from somebody whose only outlet could just be like, life sucks. I'm sad. And that will get people to check up on them or that's their cry for help. My cry for help, man, I'll pick up the phone. I'll hit up Ray. I can probably hit up Joe. You know, I got my brother. I got my other group chat. I can be like, yo, prayer request or y'all pray for me about this. Like we do in our group chat. I can go to that. I don't have to put on the TL. Social media is there like when I need it, maybe like social media for me is not it's never real life man you get what i'm saying i may have picked up some, some bad habits i'll keep it a buck but ultimately it was what i wanted it to be i needed it for laughs i need it for maybe just a platform for communication for me to check up on people one-on-one -on -one. but the tls the facebook tl whatever that that's just for funny pictures memes videos maybe highlights that's it i i use social media for that reason only because my network has such an expanse when i was in ukraine i mean i talk to mom almost every day but a, a lot of the time mom would talk to me and she's like oh yeah and this person asked how you were doing so like it's really constant so that's why i use it in my case it's really the best catch-all that i have four minutes unfortunately 
You got 10 more? I got 10 more, man. All right, we'll, 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 we'll knock this out. Last serious question. Do you think socializing slash being in public will ever be the same? You got 63% saying no. The way they're pushing out this vaccine, I'll probably say yes. <laughs> if we're being very honest with you. Oh, the pandemic is over. I really trust y'all that way. I'm still keeping my mask on. I'm still, I'm still, stay, still stay six feet away. All that good stuff. And I mean, that's 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 understandable. We still, we saw the effects. We saw what it did. And you know, we don't want the outbreak to happen ever again. For me, I, yeah, I agree with that. Nah, I don't think so. Me personally, no. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very, for, for for the for the foreseeable future. I'm gonna be very purposeful about who I choose to bang around. You might just be a FaceTime. You might be a FaceTime buddy. You might be an in-person buddy. You, you wait and see. I, I'm still on the fence of the whole vaccine thing. But if I'm gonna contract this virus, it better be because it was worth it. It, it better not be for no, no dumb stuff. Like for people, I didn't really, I don't really even. You're not even part of the inner circle like that. You're an acquaintance. Get me sick out. Yeah. Right. I don't think it will for a while, but I do think as time goes on, yeah, I think it'll go back to normal things where you'll still see people who are going to wear masks probably the rest of their life. I think there is a lot of mental trauma that has happened. Um, I think there are some people that are scarred. I think in general, the answer will be yes. I believe there's a normalization that will occur. Her. I think that what will happen is just that there are going to be less people that are part of the normalization. I mm-hmm. feel like there are going to be some of those people where it's going to be like, all right, you know, we're at a point where we can say we're pretty much over the actual pandemic. I feel like there's going to be a maybe 15, 10, 15 percent where it's just like, man, eh, you know, I think I'm just going to switch it up and do things a little bit different. Maybe not as controversial, depending on who you might be, but you might be surprised by the results. How do you put on socks and shoes? By side or by item? 83% of people said by item. Then you yeah, they put like time. right sock, right shoe, and then left sock, left shoe. Uh, oh. What percentage is that? 17%. 17. But the cycle path? <laughs> oh, no, yo, at that point, at that point, you put you put right pant leg in, sock. Shoe. Left, <laughs> left sock, left shoe. Get out of here. Hey. Hey, they're gonna put one. They're gonna put one arm in a shirt. <laughs> one one arm in a shirt. One arm. Oh, you put you put deodorant. Left arm. <laughs> Why are you doing? You know what I'm hey, yo. <laughs> and tell him I said it. Well, oh, I mean, I'm posting this. <laughs> Man, take a shower. Take a shower. Right side, <laughs> left side. Yo. Oh, that, that'd be like that'd be like if you're putting food in your mouth. If you put it on the left side, that's the side you chew on the whole time. You know what I'm <laughs> Hey, hey, I used to do that. That's mainly because I had uh, tooth problems. I had tooth problems. Oh, okay. I had like a tooth problem on the right side. Yeah. There's a reason uh-huh. for that. If you still do it. Like you leaning, and then it's like, ah, this side is tired. And you go, to, come on, man, come on, man. And he meant it from the bottom of his soul too. That's a crazy part. He meant that from the bottom of his soul. You are uh, a psychopath. You know, people are different. You know, we embrace each other's differences. You know, as they can be embraced. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's not this one, bro. Uh, that's a whole lot of cap. That's a lot, whole lot of cap coming out of my mouth. I'll catch y'all. Cowboy up, man. All right, y'all. Stay up. Stay up. Easy.